Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss what is cross validation, why cross validation is required, and what are the different types of cross validation in machine learning. Before we discuss uh, the cross validation, first we will try to understand the basic uh, model building. Given a data set, the data set is divided into two groups one is called as a training set, another one is called as testing set. With the help of training set, we will train our machine learning model. Once the training is over, the model is tested with the help of testing set. The extended version of this particular model is something called as train test validation. In this case, again the original data is divided into training and testing set. This training set is again divided into two parts, the training and validation set here. With the help of training set, we will train our model. Once the training is over, we will see the performance of that particular model with the help of validation set here. If we are happy with that particular performance, we will go with the testing of that particular model. If the performance is not satisfactory, the model is tuned with the help of different hyperparameters and so on. And then again, we will validate that particular model. Once the validation is over, we will test it with the help of a testing set here. Once the testing is over, uh, based on the performance, we can deploy that particular model in real world or else we can uh, do some uh, hyperparameter tuning and then we will test it again at the later stage. But in both these particular techniques, uh, what we do here is uh, we will take one part of that particular data as a training, another part for validation and the third part for testing here. And if you follow this particular approach, there is a bias in this particular model because certain part of the data is used for training, certain part of the data is used for validation and remaining is for testing over here. So the model is not trained or tested with the entire uh, the data's representation over here. Because of that, the model may go into something called as overfitting state here. That is, the model will work perfectly on the training data, but it will not work on testing or it may not work in, as expected in the real world over here. To avoid these particular difficulties, we come across something called as the cross validation. In cross validation, uh, what we do is uh, we will train the model with the entire data set as well as we will test that particular data model with the help of entire data set over here. So before we understand the cross validation, we will try to understand what are the different types of cross validation we have. The very first cross validation what we have is called as the keyfold cross validation. Second one is stratified keyfold cross validation. Third one is leave one out cross validation. Fourth one is leave p out cross validation. We will try to understand each of these particular techniques one by one. First, we will continue with the keyfold cross validation. In keyfold cross validation, we will divide the entire data set into k folds. That is, uh, uh, let us say that we have the k value is equal to 10 here. So the entire data is divided into 10 folds. You can see here, this is the first one, this is the second one and so on. This is the 10th one in this case. And uh, we will train this particular model 10 times over here because the value of this particular k is equal to 10 in this case. In each and every iteration, one fold is considered for testing. Remaining nine folds will be considered for training in this particular case. In the first iteration, you can notice here, the first fold is used for uh, testing. Remaining nine folds are used for training here. Similarly, in the second iteration, we have considered second fold for testing, remaining nine folds were used for training here. The same thing is followed in all the 10 iterations. And then we will take the average of this particular performance and that average will be considered as the final performance of this particular model here. To understand k-fold cross validation, I will take one more example. In this particular case, we have uh, set the k is equal to 5 here. The meaning of this one is we want to divide the data into 5 folds. In each and every iteration, we want to take one fold for testing, remaining five folds for training over here. So if you look at this particular first uh, iteration, this particular thing was used for uh, testing and this remaining four folds were used for training in this case. In the second iteration, the second fold was used for uh, testing, remaining four folds were used for training and so on. But uh, keyfold cross validation has some disadvantages. Let us assume that we consider this particular class of that particular data. In this particular data set, we have three classes. This is the first one, and this is the second one, and this is the third one. And if you look at this particular five iterations, in the first iteration, the first fold, that is the testing fold, is coming from this particular third class of this particular data set. 
in the second again it is coming from this particular class and in the last one it is coming from first and the second class over here so the meaning of this particular thing is in each and every iteration we are not uh, taking equal representation of each of these particular classes over here because of that again it may go into something called as the overfitting state over here to avoid this particular thing we use something called as uh, the stratified k fold cross validation in this case what we do here is uh, rather than dividing that particular data into five folds we will divide that particular data in such a way that each of these particular folds will have equal representation of these particular classes over here if you look at this particular first iteration you can see here uh, this particular thing which is represented in a red color this is a testing fold and it is having equal representation of each and every class over here this is what the representation for each of those particular classes the same thing has happened in the second iteration, third iteration and so on. So if you do this particular thing, what happens is uh, in each and every iteration, we will get equal representation from each and every class of that particular data. So there will not be uh, a bias or you can say that the model will not go into a overfitting state in this case. So this is how we can uh, avoid the disadvantage of k-fold cross validation by considering the equal, equal representation of each and every class uh, that is uh, uh, done with the help of a stratified K fold cross validation here. Now coming back to the one more uh, type of uh, cross validation that is called as uh, leave one out cross validation. This is the extreme case of we can say that uh, K fold cross validation because in K fold cross validation we will divide our data into K folds. For example, if we have K is equal to 10, we will divide that particular data into 10 groups and then we will train it 10 times over there. In uh, leave one out uh, cross validation, what we do is we will consider one example for testing remaining n minus one example for the training over here. The same thing will be done in each and every iteration. For example, if we have n number of examples, we will have n iterations over here. For example, let us say that we have some 100 examples. One example is used for uh, testing and 99 will be used for uh, training in the first iteration. And the same thing will be done 100 times over here. This kind of uh, the cross validation technique is uh, not usually used in real world because it will take a lot of time to train. Uh, let us assume that you have some uh, 1000 or 10,000 number of examples. We have to train our model that many number of times. That is not uh, usually uh, feasible in real world. So we, we don't use this particular leave one out uh, cross validation. Uh, we usually go with something called as a k-fold cross validation over here coming back to the last uh, cross validation technique that is called as uh, leave p out cross validation in this case uh, rather than going with one example for testing in each iteration we will go with the p example for testing in each and every iteration that's the one thing and another thing over here is these p examples for example let us say that p is equal to three that is three examples will be selected randomly in each and every iteration in the first iteration, these three are uh, examples are considered for uh, testing and remaining are considered for a uh, training year. In the second iteration, these three are considered for uh, testing, remaining are considered for uh, testing. And if you look at this particular third one, one example which is considered for testing, which is already considered for uh, testing in the first iteration. This is this will happen because we are going to consider these particular three examples randomly. There is a possibility that the same example which was considered in the previous iteration will be considered for uh, testing in the next iteration also. So this so in this video I have discussed what are what is uh, the cross validation, why cross validation is required, and what are the different cross validation techniques. Like next video I will discuss how can we implement these particular cross validation techniques in Python. I will put the link for that video in the description below. Do follow that particular video to understand how can we implement cross validation in Python for building any machine learning models. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.